Hey, I'm Ted, this is my garage, and I'm really unhappy with my 3126 right now because the oil filter housing is leaking. I fixed it, it's still leaking. So I didn't do a video last time, this time I'm gonna do a video showing you what you gotta do to take it apart, and hopefully showing you how to uh, put it back together and have it not leak again. Yay. Can you see my excitement? All right, so the part that we're talking about here is this oil filter housing and on the 3126 and the c7 engines the way that this works is kind of uh, convoluted you have the i don't want to say it's convoluted but it's it's maybe more sensitive than it could be um, to installation and it's a known leak area so you have the oil filter housing it is on top of the oil cooler, which then sticks into the block, and then you have the block. So you have two gaskets, one between the block and the oil cooler plate, one between the oil cooler plate and the oil filter housing. The way that this all sets is all set up, and when I get it apart, I'll show you a little bit more. You can see easier uh, what it looks like. But essentially, you can't have if you have coolant leaking, you know that it's the first gasket. If you have oil leaking, um, it can either be a couple of O-rings that are down here and then one on the other side of the filter that uh, will, that have the, that uh, pass the oil to and from the block, um, or it's going to be the gasket here. So in this case, it's the gasket. Um, there is a bolt hole right behind this turbo drain. And with the engine running, I can see the oil dripping off of that bolt hole. So uh, I'm going to take everything apart here and uh, show you what you need. For those wondering why my oil filter has this uh, piece of aluminum on top of it, this is actually a custom-made sandwich adapter for a remote mount oil cooler. You can see these giant hoses. I'm going to do a separate video about that. Um, but... It's really annoying now because it means that taking this off has that much more work involved. So, all right, better get to it. All right, so I've got the coolant drained. Uh, you need to do that because uh, otherwise you're gonna get a real shower when you undo this. And I've got my oil filter and oil cooler assembly off. If you take a look, there's a specific torque diagram um, and torque spec that you're going to need to put this back together. It's available if you just do a Google search. And that kind of helps you give an get, get an idea of where all the bolts are. There's a total of 15 bolts that hold this thing in place. And taking them out, of course, it's not really too big of a deal what the order is, but putting them back in, uh, it, it is a big deal. You have, to, you have to put them in and torque them in the correct sequence. So I have been able to get all of these out. Uh, I haven't started yet this time around, but since I've already done it, I can tell you. For, for me, I was able to get all of these out from underneath the bus. Um, required a, a combination of quarter inch drive, three eighths drive, extensions, deep well, shallow, all of that. Especially for the ones that were uh, above the oil filter uh, area itself, That's those were probably the hardest ones to get to. The, the other hard one is right behind this oil, uh, turbo oil drain, which I really didn't want to remove, and I'm glad I didn't have to. Um, but I found that just a, a shallow 13 millimeter, uh, these are all 13 millimeter bolts, by the way, a quarter inch drive with a little extension, and that gave me just enough room to do it. So, all right, let's get back to work. I almost forgot to mention that uh, before you take the, house, the uh, oil filter housing off all the way. Don't forget to uh, remove the, oil, the turbo supply line, uh, which is on the top of the housing, assuming you have a turbo, which you probably do. I think all 3126s and C7s were turbocharged. So there's a couple of different fitting options, but they all are on the top right there. Mine looks brand new because I just replaced it when I had this off yesterday. All right. Let's uh, get this off and uh, get the rest of the bolts out of the oil filter housing. Okay, well, I got everything apart, and I think I found my problem. So let's talk about a couple of things here. First one is that there have been a few updates to the 3126 and C7 uh, as far as the oil filter housing gasket is concerned and also the housing itself. What I have 
currently is the old style housing. And what I had on here when I took this apart the first time was the old style gasket, which I think is original. This is the new style gasket. And if you take a look, you'll notice that it's got some, some changes. Now, the biggest one is here in the middle and this is upside down, but to, but to try to show you how, there, I'll make it upside right. To show you how the oil flow goes into and out of the engine, there's an O-ring fitting, oil comes from the oil pump into here. Now, from here, it goes through the oil cooler, which has a port right about here, comes around, then comes out the other side right around here. It then goes through the filter, down into the filter, back up through the filter, out through the center, and then back to the engine right here. You've got two bypass valves. This one opens up if the oil filter itself is clogged, or I'm sorry, if the oil cooler is clogged. And then that's the one that opens up if the oil filter is clogged. So that's why this, this, this passage exists, because if the oil cooler is clogged, then the engine will, uh, then the oil will push this valve open, go through here, and you won't have oil starvation. Similarly, if the filter is clogged, the oil will come into the filter area. It will then bypass from this, uh, from this bypass fitting, and then it will go back into the engine. The theory being it's better to have dirty oil or hot oil than no oil. Uh, and this is this is a, this is a pretty common thing on a lot of engines. But when I looked at these gaskets, you can see, the, aside from the big differences in the center, and and the real reason for these differences are to try to prevent dirty oil from going into the clean oil side, because the original gasket design was prone to blowing out. And what happened with that was that that was causing Huey pump failures, which are really expensive, and there's a service letter on that. But there's also some other differences. And so, like, you can see, and this is where my issue was, I think. Down here, you can see the gasket comes, follows the bolt hole, keeps going. Here, the gasket comes all the way down around the bolt hole. This is a better design. This makes better use of the clamping area. The problem is you can see where the gasket originally was not um, covering this area and now this area matters for the clamping and you can't really see here because I've already scraped it off but there was just a little tiny speck of yellow paint right there. And this was the hole that it was leaking from, and that's enough to cause it. Now you might say, well, it was leaking before, and was that the issue before? Well, I don't think so, because when I took all of this apart, I think it was leaking from over here. And the reason is you, there's a hole, I, I cleaned it off, but there's a lot of residue that I had to clean off uh, that was caked on oil. And the other thing was you could tell that the oil had been running down through here, wicking its way through the holes. The holes were really, really bad. So this seemed smooth. It seemed like I cleaned it up well enough. Um, when I had held the new gasket over, it seemed like overall, it seemed like the sealing surface wasn't enough different that it should be too much of a problem. Um, I hadn't really paid close enough attention, I think, to where the differences were and what areas that might leave opened up. So <clears throat> I guess I feel better about this um, overall because now I found a problem. Um, there is an updated style of the oil filter housing that Cat has and they have it in stock it seems like but it's a Sunday so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get anybody to get it so that I can put all of this back together. Um, but the big differences that I see from the pictures are that there's a gusset kind of over here connecting this area and a gusset connecting this area. And that's obvious, that, that looks stronger to me, and I'm sure that they did that because there were uh, some issues with this style. 
if I'd have known that, I probably would have just bought it in the first place. And um, so now I think uh, that's what I'm going to figure out how to do. And then we'll put everything back together. I'll also take the oil cooler off because that still needs to come off anyway. And I'll show you what that all looks like. So now I've removed the oil cooler and um, you can see how this works. Uh, like I was showing you, you've got the inlet and outlet, which just end up going into the filter housing or in and out of the filter housing. Um, and then those are the, those are the ports on the block where the engine or where the oil goes in and out, um, which then correspond to those little passages down there. So these need to be really, really, um, really, really straight and parallel. And I've, I've seen some uh, people talk about issues with them. Um, this one is working. I don't think it was the problem, but if you notice down here in the same area, remember this is the hole that was leaking. Um, you can see again that the old gasket was not covering that and you see some discoloration or some corrosion. And then the new gasket does cover it up. Now, if I run it over, run my fingernail over it, you know, I hear it, but I don't feel anything. So I don't think that that was the problem. That said, if the cat dealer has a new one, I'll probably just buy it and put it on anyway, because uh, at this point, I just want everything to get put together and be done with it. The other thing is, you know, there there is some corrosion in a couple of spots, nothing that I'm concerned about there. Um, but on the engine side, there was actually more corrosion, and I was I was more concerned about that area leaking. Um, but uh, at least so far, it doesn't seem like it, it is. But at this point, I'm just going to replace the whole thing if I can. So let's see if the cat dealer calls me back on a Sunday. I figured while I've got everything apart, I'll just kind of show you what all of this looks like. Um, you can see once again, you got the ports on the block that have that are the inlet and the outlet for the oil. The oil cooler sits in this cavity, which gets it so the oil cooler gets first uh, dibs at the cold water coming from the water pump after it's gone through the radiator. Um, and then another cool part is that it uh, is also right next to the block heater. So this whole area uh, gets heat from the block heater. So there's some level of oil preheat when you're plugging it in. So that's, that's kind of nifty. Um, overall, I'm not sure how much I like this design given that I'm now taking it apart again for a leak, but at least I seem to have figured out what the reason was. Now I bought a whole bunch of new parts at the cat dealer. So new oil filter housing, and you can see the updates where it's got these gussets over in those spots. And then it's also got another gusset up here. Um, this does not come with any of the fittings. So make sure that you get appropriate fittings and O-rings when you're doing it. Remand oil filter, uh, oil cooler, which I think actually looks beefier than the old one. So that's good if that's an upgrade. Gone through and gotten that prepped. So one thing I want to point out is that you can see I've gotten started up there. Um, and one thing that I did, they recommend when you're doing this to have some hangers because you can't really put all of this on as an assembly. Um, there's no space and there's really no way to hold it all together. So they recommend putting some hangers up so that you can put the pieces on one at a time and just and have them hanging there rather than falling down. So I just took a couple of the old bolts, cut the heads off, and screwed them in a couple of threads, and that'll work just fine for that and make it a whole lot easier to put this stuff together. So let's uh, slap it in and uh, get everything torqued properly and see, keep our fingers crossed that it will hold this time. All right, I got everything in. Uh, using those bolts as hangers was uh, made things a lot easier, and they'll be easy enough to get out. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm just going to start uh, hand threading all the bolts in. That way, that that way I know I'll get a good torque because they'll all be started, and I won't have to worry about any kind of misalignment on the gasket on one area or something like that. So get those in and then it's time to torque. All right, it's all back in and in the name of all that is yellow, I hope that this does not leak. Time to start it. It's about two weeks and two and a half thousand miles later. Uh, after I started the engine, it was not leaking. I did a little bit of a test drive, made sure everything was looking good and still not leaking. 
we were a couple days behind from when we were planning on leaving for our RV trip, so then we just packed up, hit the road, went through all the four corner states, did about 2,700 miles, I guess, was what it ended up being. And everything worked flawlessly. I crawled under the bus, nothing's leaking. So, success. I was really happy that it worked. Um, so a couple of lessons learned and some points for you if you're doing this. First one is, uh, cleanliness matters a lot. Um, that, that part, I think, kind of goes without saying. But maybe the, the next one that's a little bit less obvious is that Caterpillar has a tendency to make updates to their parts uh, and make the engines better. The, the engine, as it gets older, has updated parts, updated gaskets available, and they do that because they find a problem and they fix it. And that's one of the things I really like about Caterpillar. In this case, that's also partly what caused the leak that I had when I put it all back together the first time, uh, combined with the cleanliness aspect of, of what I missed. Um, they made a, a new gasket, it's a better gasket, no question about that, but because it was covering that little area on the oil filter housing that was not covered before and there was that little piece of paint on it, which for all I know maybe that got on because I, I messed up the ins installation a little bit and got it scraped off, um, it leaked there. And if it had the old style gasket, it wouldn't have leaked there, but I would have had the inferior uh, gasket on the inside, which might have blown out eventually and killed my Huey pump. So um, my suggestion is that if you are doing this job, make sure that you get the new gasket if your uh, engine came with the older one. And also take a look to see if you have an updated uh, if you have the newer style oil filter housing or not. Um, when I had put this together the first time, I thought about just buying the newer style oil filter housing, um, or rather I didn't know there was, but I thought about just getting a new one anyway, uh, just so that I had all new parts going back together because usually I shotgun things because this is the kind of thing that happens a lot of times when you don't, is that something is worn and it just doesn't end up working right. Uh, so if I could do this over again, uh, I probably would have asked if there was an updated part or tried to look into it a little bit more. And uh, I'm also glad that I got the new oil cooler because there was some corrosion on the old one. And, and while that part was not leaking and realistically I don't think would have leaked or braked, um, I never want to do this again. And so the few hundred bucks I would have saved that I was trying to save uh, ended up resulting in a couple of days worth of delay on our trip. and. Uh, really just wasn't worth it in the end. So do it right, do it once, shotgun it, that's what I would suggest. Um, when you're putting it all back together, definitely make sure you're following the torque order um, and the torque spec. Take your time, do it carefully. Um, what I did of cutting off those two bolt heads so that I had hangers to put all the pieces up, I would absolutely recommend that. Um, that makes things a whole lot easier to do and especially for something like this where it's fairly sensitive and you've got multiple pieces stacked up together that you can't really uh, do individually uh, or do as, a, as an assembly. Uh, this, this just makes it a whole lot easier and makes it more likely that you're going to succeed. Um, some people that I saw had said that they used some kind of a, a gasket maker uh, or gasket dressing on the gasket when putting it on. Uh, Caterpillar doesn't recommend that, and as an engineer, as I look at how that is set up, um, specifically the oil filter housing side, where you've got that center section that is supposed to be divided pressure-wise from the outside sections because you got the dirty, air, dirty oil on the outside that then goes through the filter and is supposed to come up as clean oil through the center. Um, that's an area that is inherently sensitive. You can't have, you don't have, and you kind of can't have bolts that go and support those divisions in the gasket strictly because you have um, the oil cooler behind it. And so you, you don't have, you don't really want bolts that are going into the oil cooler uh, and, and you don't in this case. So that le lends itself to something that is inherently sensitive. And I think that, uh, Caterpillar has the torque spec and the torque diagram 
to for for a good reason. So I think I w would I have put gasket dressing on? Uh, yeah, if if this hadn't worked, then I probably would have resorted to it. But at least in this case, I didn't need to, uh, and I I think it's better to do it without if if you can. Hopefully, you found this useful. Um, it's not a bad job. It's not the easiest job in the world either, but ultimately Caterpillar does a pretty good job of making things serviceable. Um, and I've been pretty impressed with this engine overall and how serviceable it's been. If you like this, make sure to hit a like and a subscribe. And uh, I've got some other videos on this engine as well as the modifications I've done to the RV that have helped make it better for us, uh, more reliable, and with these electric fans, faster. Thanks for watching, have a good day.